Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and for part three of my sit down conversation with author James A. McQuiston. We get started with uh, James talking about a letter that was found and this was from Mary Queen of Scots. It was a document that gave the Masons the right to meet again in secret. We start there, then we get into a little bit about James's new uh, show called Oak Island Plus. Hope you enjoy this part three. This piece of paper was found in 2019, and it is the actual document where Mary Queen of Scots gave the Masons the right to meet in secret again and have their deacon, their position of deacon. And it was in shuffled in with a bunch of other papers in a building called Holyrood Palace which is at the end of the Royal Mile, on the opposite end of the Royal Mile from Edinburgh Castle. And the royal family would stay there a lot because it was much more comfortable. And in the castle, you know, people think castles just for the king and queen. There were a gazillion people in there. There were guards and there were craftsmen and whatever. It was a noisy place. So they would take refuge in Holyrood Palace. They found a bunch of her paperwork in there. And one of them was this document found in 2019. And Everybody knew about her edict that they could meet in private, in secret, but nobody knew where the document went. <laughs> so just like I found her her um, cipher code sheets after three months of asking everybody in the world, uh, they accidentally found this when they were cleaning out uh, other papers. And so they put it online with the whole story about it being uh, how she allowed the free or the masons the stone masons to meet in secret again about my little show coming up oak island plus and of course i thank the folks on oak island and prometheus for all the opportunities they gave me i'm not done yet i might be done writing books but i'm not done i'm uh, i have islanditis really bad <laughs> and, uh, go down rabbit holes I, I i believe i go down one every single day and it's been eight years of it so I don't see it stopping real quick for any reason. But in the meantime, I thought, well, if we approached it a different way, not having so many dangling conversations and you have to write a whole new book about it, but as things come up, we just put them in the show each yeah. month and we drill down. I, I don't know if I can legally use the, word, <laughs> the words drill down here, but we dig deeper. Well, you can't do that either. Any <laughs> Uh, you know, we we delve into, there you go. There you go, yeah, that'll work. People, people, places, or things, or events, and say, this is the sources on this, and, and uh, here's a, this guy might be an expert on it, and uh, let's hear what he has to say. And then it'll, it'll continue to help unveil the truth. It'll continue to help people um, understand Oak Island, and uh, who knows, we might trip over some other amazing thing, you know, that one thing, like Rick's always trying to find yep. the ground. I'm trying to find that one thing in the literature and the document yep. that. And uh, so even though I wasn't on, you know, I, I did two presentations in 2021, and it was quite the chore to get up there with COVID restrictions. Oh, yeah. But I do appreciate the fact that I was ranked second. And uh uh -huh honored to be asked to rick's home for three well we didn't know the time but it ended up being three hours we sat in his kitchen talking and he just told me so much stuff and i was like just be a sponge jim keep your mouth shut and you don't need to tell him your life story <laughs> you know and <laughs> i just learned so much and i learned uh, i think i kind of maybe learned his motivation uh, beyond just a childhood dream for what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I talked about that quite a bit. Um, I appreciate Charles. Every single year I went up there, he took me on a four wheeler or a golf cart somewhere. He took me <laughs> to see the Mi'kmaq uh, dig that they had to bury oh, back. Wow. Yeah. He took me to see Sam Ball's uh, excavation. That would be great. Yeah, out on I point, which I'd never been out there before, but uh -huh. you know, they're ringing the whole island with those big rocks to try to protect it from storms. Right. Yep. And uh -huh. He drove me up there to show me, and he said, this is Isaac's point up here, and I had mentioned to him about a tea room, about uh, John Smith having the tea room for uh -huh. people to 
be the stone. He said, well, there used to be a tea room out here too. We haven't been able to find the the foundations for it or anything, but the, the, in the records it says there was a tea room here because he said back in the old day, there were just so many visitors to the island. So uh, I appreciate the, all the work Doug has done with me, uh, trading emails. I, I probably have gotten more emails from Doug than from anybody. And, but I, I appreciate the help that Laird, you know, I talked to Laird quite a while. I talked to Steve Guptill helped on the uh, Nolan's Cross. So they're interested. And I kind of coined this in that first introductory show, but uh, regardless of what you see on TV, the uh, searchers want to hear everything. Uh And Prometheus wants to film everything. Now, how it all shakes out for the TV show might right. be an animal. Yep. Uh, they want to film everything. They don't bother you. They don't tell you what to say, what not to say. And uh, I, I went up there one year with only a one-hour presentation because I didn't want to be too rough on the guys. And they literally kept me in there for four hours. And they had been out in the field all day. We didn't even start the a presentation until about 7. So we wow. were in there at 11. And... Uh, I could tell everybody was tired and I was tired too. Cause I just flew that day, uh-huh. so, but they didn't want to quit talking. They wanted to ask this question and ask that question. And uh, Jack's a great question asker. I think he asks the questions that he thinks the viewers want. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because sometimes they seem like simpler questions, but they actually force you to get to the guts of the story, you know? So yeah. I told him one time, he asked one question. I said, that's at the back of the presentation. I said, I bet in in school, you used to turn to the back page and, and <laughs> the back page first. You know, and he laughed about that. But um, everybody's been so nice. And uh, whether I'll ever be on the show or not, again, I don't know. I, you know, I'm ready to go up anytime. I, I love the place. And I've been up yep. there, been on the island, I think, 15 days. And, and I'm so happy to hear that you're going to go up there. Oh, I know. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I don't know if I'll get on the island. I doubt that. <laughs> well, <I don't> know. <laughs> It'd be nice to be, uh, you know, I, I am going to do a uh, meet with Karen, uh, public cover, and she lives on the, uh, obviously, from the Oak Island from the other side of the causeway. I'll be meeting with her. So I'll get that close anyway. <laughs> that was funny because the first year I went up there, I pulled onto the causeway, but I didn't know if I dared go across. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anybody or anything yet. I mean, they invited me up, but it right, was yeah. very green. So I backed up in onto her uh, ro- a road in front of her house, mm-hmm. actually on the side of the road, which actually would be on her property on the opposite side of the road of her right. little house. And she came walking out to the car, and I didn't know if she was going <laughs> to yell at me or what. And she said, you're Jim McQuiston. Uh, and I said, yeah. And she said, yeah, I've seen, I've seen your picture. I've seen your, I said, well, you're, you must be Karen public cover. And uh-huh. so we kind of had this little two minute friendly conversation there. And That's I cool. said, I'm not hurting your yard, am I? And she said, oh, no, you're okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. she's given us all so many hints. She oh, probably yeah. stored in the side of Oak Island when they're trying to keep a secret, <laughs> but, uh, but everybody's, everybody's trying, you know, yeah. and, uh, everything short of something illegal. Yeah. Well, she was right. She was the one that told us about Dumas when Dumas trucks were going across. Yeah. That's where we first found out about it when she took that picture. So, um, and, uh, another one that she revealed was when the, the kind of like a tiny house archives, the blue one, mm-hmm. moved on the island. Rick had just told me a month or so before that that he wanted to build an archive center, which they're doing now. Right. And uh, he said that there, he said he put in for about a million dollar budget for it. He said, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm, I'm getting pretty good results. Well, right after that, Zena died and he got all that book work. And I think it came down to a pinch of where do we put all this stuff? Right. Yeah. Let's get a, a trailer, tiny house archive center in here quick so we can start storing stuff until we get this sort of this mess uh-huh. out and then through the years they finally got around to building that and if i ever get up there again uh, i definitely want to see that i want to see if oh, my yeah. book is still on the wall in the interpretive center <laughs> out there but uh uh if i don't get asked back up which may be the case for whatever reason i don't even have a reason in my mind why that would be the case but 
um, I will probably at some point just pay my own way to go up and uh, just knock on the door and say, Hey, I'm here. Can I come in? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do that. Yeah. Uh, well, I bet you could though. They got to know. I mean, look at Laird's been on your show and yeah, well, they all know they, yeah, all those guys know that I'm coming up. So yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you would do as a theorist, but uh, <laughs> you could, you could, I'm going to itemize all the theories that have been on my show for the last however many years. Well, here, here's what I could do is that, that I could go up there and tell them that I, I do have a theory and it's based upon every theorist that's been on my show. I've taken little bits and pieces of every single one of them and kind of put it all together and go, you know what? I think this is the actual theory. Well, they, I've often said if all the theorists would work together, you would have this thing solved five years ago. And I have uh, emailed a little bit with uh, Corian Mole and mm -hmm. with Chris Mulford and uh, with uh, Scott Clark. Uh, yep. Scott Clark's is probably the closest to my theory. Mm -hmm. He's His new book is uh, something like uh, Masonic Odyssey or something. And yep. mm -hmm. it doesn't cover the area that I cover uh, in that detail, but it's uh, at least it's leaning that way. And we kind of talked about it a little bit that maybe if we found places where the books crossed over, mm -hmm. we would use those as a starting point. And then we'd say, okay, we're both in agreement on this. So let's branch out and see where it goes. But uh, this show, believe me, and you know it because you do a show, I never thought there'd be that much to this show. It's and we had to learn Adobe Rush. We had to learn the cameras, the SD cards. I had to get an SD card reader. Uh, uh -huh. you know, there's one thing after another, and uh, I, like I'm 73 years old, and I'm <laughs> learning all this crazy <laughs> technological stuff, and uh, right. I'm doing okay. The the head of the studio says you're doing fine. You're way ahead. You know they'll keep going. You know, <laughs> so I think each show will be get easier and you probably found that too oh yeah definitely uh, each show will get easier and uh um and hopefully that allows us to get better too but you know yeah. if you if it's easier to produce it you can do right. a little job so anyway we're looking forward to our next show and i i just want to tell you i love your show and i think that it's so refreshing because i've watched lots of people on the show and you just let them come on and talk and you don't you don't stop like some podcast interviewers, and I've I've uh, been a victim of them, of them I guess. Uh, yes, you've been on a few. Sentence out, and they're starting to tell you you're wrong, or well, yeah, oh, yeah, no, ever. And, and I'm, and you think to yourself, well, did you want me on your show or not? You know, because mm -hmm. they have a story to tell. I'm just going to tell it. I'll get off the screen, you know. And so, uh, yours has always struck me as not being that way. Yours is come on a show and talk. And, exactly. Uh, and that's exactly what it's about because I want to learn something. I want to hear what you have to say. And you the viewers too. I think the viewers yeah. appreciate it because the guy's allowed to finish his thought. And sometimes when you're in the middle of the thought, you're thinking about something else that goes with it, but you got to get this thought out of the way so you can get it. <laughs> and yeah. then interrupted. Mm -hmm. You lose the whole train of thought. And then after the show's over, you go, son of a gun. I didn't even tell mm -hmm. him, you know. So anyway, I appreciate the show. And I know a lot of people like it and well, watch it. Jim, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That thing of it was, too. And it really kind of started with the theorists because I thought, you know, here they are. They're on, you know, Oak Island, like you said. At one stent, you were sitting in the war room there for set, or for four hours. And we only got to see a little bit of that, you know, just a few moments of that. So my idea was to have a possible a place set up where the theorists can come on and then tell us all of it or much more of that story than just that, you know, five minute snippet that they were on the show. And and sometimes, you know, I would I mean I was thrilled to be on the show, but I would say to myself afterwards but they left out this, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and then I'm, then I'm racking my brain. Why did they leave that out? Was right. it something I did? Something, I said something that they're worried about somebody giving them a hard time about, uh, you know, it's, you, right. and you just rack your brain as to why, but ultimately I know that they film the show. They have somebody that takes notes on the show. Generally that person sends the notes to me. I edit them to make sure they're, more accurate than they're sent to Los Angeles. And then 
a whole new guy gets the gets the mess and has to start making a you know yeah. four minutes of airtime right out of all of that and uh they told me once that the show uh is not finished till a week before i've heard that too yeah and they mail it to well they mail it digital digitally send it i don't know how from los angeles to new york where it's actually broadcast from new york but it's edited in los angeles uh -huh. so one week out they send that the next show to and you would think i mean i would have never guessed that if they wouldn't have told me that i thought they had them all in the can they were right ready to go they got oh we got the first six episodes ready yeah. to rock and roll already and yeah and we'll start working on seven eight nine now while one gets going you know yeah you think that's how it would work but <laughs> i've so, heard that same thing yeah, a challenge for them and they have a lot of cameras like you're yeah working with one i'm working with one Actually, uh, I've got two but yeah <laughs> we work with three but mm -hmm. they literally have drones in the air and guys on the ground oh i know right we went up to new ross it's just funny quick story but there's uh where we parked there was a uh not a real challenging grass hill to climb to get up to the well foundation but it was something you didn't want to do all day so they have they tell us pull over there and get out of your truck walk up the hill and tim and alessandra will meet you up there uh -huh. so we get halfway up that hill and a semi comes by and the drone operator's like oh, cut 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 they he ruined my audio so because they had two drones <laughs> three guys so they said all right we'll just go back and get out of the truck again so we started back up the hill halfway up the hill boom happened again and we're like we're getting, you know, this already we're tired of this hill. Uh -huh. So we said, all right, we'll try it one more time. And if it doesn't work, we're going to get to the foundation some other way. So the third time was a charm. We got all the way up the hill and we met them and everything. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, that film never got used. And the main reason I know was because the black flies were out terrible. Oh, and yeah. Tim sprayed us all down uh, with this spray. Uh, you know, we spun around in a circle and he sprayed us all down and everything, but our hands were flying past our faces the whole time. And the whole time they're filming, I'm like, they can't use this. I mean, everybody's going to have a hand in the air at some point. Yeah. It was too bad because it was pretty cool. We we found where the, pretty close to exactly where that medallion was found. And we looked at the well, looked down the well. I know that's, that's one, uh, one place that I really uh, wish that we could do a lot more, you know, archaeological uh well you know what i told them is that they should make a it, see there's a little house that they rent uh -huh. that, that joan harris used to rent from the owner uh -huh. and they bought it they rent this out to other people well i said you should turn that into a museum because uh -huh. there's so many people that want to know about that and they're only like uh 20 minutes from oak island and they can scoot right up the road to along gold river right up to new ross and they can right. station and because they, they have other stuff besides mine i have a ton of stuff on it but they know that there was a blacksmith living there for a while mm -hmm. uh you know they have other theories about the well other theories about who built it so you know they they have a cute little museum but you know there's money in it and then you got to hire somebody to run it if you if you have your own jobs and gotta make it an airbnb yeah I always thought that the Laginas should just buy it and tie it all in with Oak Island. You know? yeah, yeah, maybe one day they might. So it's a pretty s substantial document. For sure. Was it, uh, was it um, you know, verified? I mean, did people... Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, stuff? It's definitely her signature on it and everything. It, it, you can barely read the signature, but it's on there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, wow. and a lot of these, uh, they when they do verify them, they stamp them with a stamp that's like... A, a, are but it's for royalty or queen roy meant royalty just like royston you remember the little town of royston uh -huh. the uh royal burg and king charles had a home there and william alexander sent a gazillion official letters from there and so they put that r on there to to essentially mean royalty and so it doesn't get that stamp on there until all the archivists and historians and everybody inspects it up and down. They probably even carbon date the paper and everything, you know, to make yeah. sure that they're right. real. So, <clears throat> right time frame. They could even look at the ink. 
yeah, uh, yeah. do some stuff for uh, making up the what was in the ink. You know, I talked to Rick about the parchment, speaking of that subject, and I said, couldn't you get it carbon dated? He said, there's only, we would ruin the whole thing. There's not very much of it. We would ruin the whole thing. But we do think that there's a way that we can prove what the ink is without destroying it. Uh-huh. And we're going to look into, but I never heard. It's one of many dangling conversations like All right. there were more bones found than we uh-huh. know. There were more Mi'kmaq relics found. I, the oh, only yeah. I feel comfortable about saying this is because Laird said it on your show. Yes, he did. Uh, yep. <clears throat> the day I was up there, Jack found another arrowhead and I was sitting in the archives with Steve and Doug and Laird and eventually uh, uh, eventually Rick came in too but we were all sitting there eating lunch and somebody came in and said Jack found another arrowhead and somebody says why is it why is Jack finding all the arrowhead (laughs) but uh, Rick told me uh, of the things they found and there could be many more than this Mm -hmm. two arrowheads a hide scraper and the cup or bowl whatever it was and i think my theory there is that that was a trading post right there because it's known uh, uh, in history there's it's recorded that the Mi'kmaq would trap beaver up by the lakes around new ross Mm -hmm. and they would bring them down gold river now they weren't called new ross or gold river at the time and Mahone Bay wasn't called Mahone Bay either, but they would bring them down and trade them there. But it didn't say where they traded them, but right. obviously they want to trade them on land. So if that stone road was like a wharf to bring your tenders from the big ships or your canoes full of beaver pelts, yeah. the thing about it is they found both European and Mi'kmaq artifacts. They're sort of mixed, you know, uh-huh. in the same area. And that would probably happen if it was a trading post. And then they also found the uh, bag seal. And I right. found that one of the main things that the Native Americans and First Nation Canadians wanted to trade first for was European cloth because it was so refined and colorful. Right. And mm-hmm. We that. And so all that cloth had to have one of those bag seals clipped to it. Uh, okay. to- get out of the country without it so there's at least a scenario that somebody was brought in cloth and maybe other trinkets or whatever off the big ship on a tender pulled up there and they came down gold river with their beaver pelts and they negotiated for the next hour until they came up with a fair trade for both people All and, right. uh, the in the meantime barrels got lost or broken and Mm-hmm. Egg seals got dropped, and <laughs> well, you're explaining away you know, quite a few of the finds already. And one of the things that was found there that I just jumped up and down about, you may remember this, is the T square. Because, oh, yeah, that was awesome. The T square, yeah, dated to as old as 1632, which is my date for the whole thing to happen. The, yeah, the whole thing to, to happen is uh, the spring and summer of 1632. They, they had for sure from April to the beginning of September uh, that because the French didn't get there till September and the French up in Port Royal didn't kick them out till the end of March. They had to leave by in the early part of April. So they had that, that many months. And uh, so anyway, uh, all of that's in my books and I don't want to get too much of it. I don't want the show to extend too long. Yeah. Uh, you have some editing to do as it is and I don't want to stuff on you, but um uh, <laughs> I hope that I covered enough here to let I people so. know there's a ton of stuff in my books. There's going to be hopefully a ton of stuff on the show. And I did have the second place theory after all. <laughs> yep, you did. All right. Yeah. Well, Jeff, thanks for having me on the show. Okay. Give me a a to talk about my books and about my little show coming up, Oak Island Plus. And of course, I thank the folks on Oak Island and Prometheus for all the opportunities they gave me. I'm not done yet. I might be done writing books, but I'm not done. I am uh, I have islanditis really bad <laughs> and uh, go down rabbit holes. I, I, I believe I go down one every single day and it's been eight years of it. So I don't see it stopping. 
real quick for any reason. What's the uh, website one more? We do have it listed in the description down below, but well, uh, give us the name of the show again. It's called Oak Island Plus, and you can yeah. access it through Facebook at Oak Island Plus or through the web on at www.oakislandplus.com. Either one will give you a link that you just click on, and you, the show itself is on YouTube. Again, the first one, I think it was 35 minutes, and it's very introductory, and also uh, we were novices at everything we were doing, so we were we were struggling to set up everything, you know, and this seems good, and that seems good, you know, and you get four hours into it, and you're like, go with it, you know, go with it, you know. Yeah. But uh, like I say, I think it's all going to get simpler, and it's certainly going to get more intense. I mean, when right. we start mm. next show off, we're going to be boom, right in the stones, you know. Yeah. Well, for sure. I tell you what, we'll and uh, we'll tell people a little bit as we go along. We'll definitely keep a uh, keep it uh, linked inside our Facebook group page and all that, so people can find it there uh, as we go along. And I'll be talking about it here in the future. Well, thank you very much, uh, James. I appreciate it so much coming on the show. And well, that wraps it up. And we thank you for joining us for part three of this three-part series on James A. McQuiston. We hope that you will check out other broadcasts that we have coming up in the future. If you like the content of our show, give us a thumbs up and please click on that subscribe button. Thank you very much and have a great evening.